All right, good evening to all of us. Magandang magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Welcome to uh, Bergen Bible Baptist Church for our last prayer meeting for the month of August. And we thank God for your presence and attendance tonight. Um, uh, let's look at some greetings from our uh, live streaming. Um, good morning from Pastor Abel all the way from the Philippines. <laughs> He's one of our pastoral staff, our music minister. He's in the Philippines right now, and from uh, the mother of Brother uh, Christian Damson, you know, she's always uh, there, uh, tuning in from uh, Luzon, Philippines, and also from uh, Pennsylvania, Pastor Max and wife, and our brethren all over uh, the Bergen County uh, area and other places. So thank God for your presence tonight, and we are here tonight to pray to praise and to hear the preaching of God's word and uh, also thank God for our missionary friends in our midst tonight and we will introduce them later the uh, Beeman family so we thank God that they could uh, join us in our prayer meeting tonight so uh, as we start our service as we always do we'd like to praise the Lord through some singing to prepare our hearts for uh, prayer and the word of God tonight let me ask our folks to stand if you could please and let's sing some um, wonderful hymns unto the Lord. Let's first sing Lily of the Valley. One of uh, the wonderful things about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is that Lily of the Valley. All right? Let's sing this unto the Lord on the top. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The Lily of the Valley. I see all I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow is my comfort, in trouble is my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. Sees the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Is the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my grief has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation is my strong and mighty tar. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn. From my heart and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith and do His blessed will. Amen. Sing it, God's people. I've nothing now to fear. From His manna, He my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Amen. Good singing, brethren. Next song we will uh, sing, Count Your Blessings. We know the Lord has blessed us both uh, physically, materially, but most of all spiritually because of what Christ has done for us. Amen? We are the most blessed group of people in the world. We have hope and joy and peace and love from our Lord. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Then after this, I'll ask uh, Brother Henry to lead us in a word of prayer. All right? Let's sing this with smile in our faces and joy in our hearts. On the top. When upon life's billows you are tempestos, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. Second verse. 
When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy, your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. On the last. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journeys and Count your blessings, name them one by one. Amen. See what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. Amen. Father Andy, please come. Okay, let us bow our head and let us pray. Lord God, once again, Lord, we just want to praise you once again for this day. And thank you so much once again for all the blessings that you shower upon your children, Lord. And we... Uh, most especially, Lord, for our salvation, Lord. Thank you so much for dying on the cross for us. And Lord, once again, um, just be with us tonight and be with your uh, speaker tonight, Brother Glenn, Lord, and use him mightily, Lord, to to um, share your word to us, Lord, and bless us with your word once again tonight. And once again, Lord, uh, forgive us for our shortcoming, and we just commit everything to you, Lord, whatever we do. We we just want to glorify your name, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the prayer, Brother Henry. You may all be seated, and we will sing uh, our next song, I Must Tell Jesus, uh, hymn number 238, as we uh, go on our prayer time tonight. Thank God for the wonderful invitation to talk to the Lord and come boldly to his throne of grace. All right? On the first verse. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make all my troubles quickly an end. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Tempted and tried, I need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. Amen. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, He all my cares and sorrows will share. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, 
Jesus alone. Amen. Do you believe the message of that song? Amen. Praise the Lord for His open invitation all the time to come and to Christ every time, every moment, because He always listens. Amen. So this time before we go to our prayer time, uh, we thank God for the presence of the Beeman family and that they could uh, be able to minister to us tonight. And let me ask uh, Brother Tom to please come and share uh, his testimony. Then uh, we have a special treat tonight. Uh, their daughters will come and sing for us. Amen. So, here's the full KO. Uh, we are the Beeman family, and we are so excited uh, to be missionaries. We are going to the Philippines. Uh, just give you a little uh, testimony. I would say when I was nine years old, I grew up in Michigan, and I knew as a nine-year-old boy that I needed to be saved. Uh, my religion, that my the religion that my parents had, wasn't good enough. I had to know Jesus personally, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember that night after I got saved, I felt like this huge burden was just lifted off my shoulders, and I was just happy to be saved. And that's the peace you can have knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. And I, I met my wife in 2005 at Pensacola Christian College. She was saved when she was. Uh, 13 years old, and she introduced me to the Philippines. And we, she was born in New Jersey, actually grew up in San Diego. Uh, but her, her family, uh, of course, she grew up in a Christian home. Her uh, Lola uh, grew up in, um, uh, in Pateros, and uh, an American missionary came and uh, knocked on their door and invited them to church, and, and their family got saved. And all these years later, um, we're going back to the Philippines as missionaries. It's gone full circle, and that's only by God's grace. And we're just thankful. We're thankful to be called. It's a privilege. It really is. Um, we, we, um, did, after we got married in 2009, we um, started going on missions trips to the Philippines. But you know what? We had our careers here in America, and uh, things were going well. Um, my wife went to school for nursing. And then uh, she went out and got her master's degree, became a nurse practitioner in nephrology. And uh, many of you know about that. Uh, but uh, God just blessed. And I give him all the glory for that. And I went to school for computer science and software engineering. And we started our careers, started working our way up the corporate ladder of success. And, and God blessed. And you know what? We got into the home of our dreams. I like to tell pastors that we've kind of lived the American dream already. We're um, 34 years old. My wife... She looks like she's 18, but uh, <laughs> she doesn't age, and that's great. She's beautiful. Uh, actually, just had our anniversary, so I'm just thankful uh, that we're now going to the Philippines. And our daughters, uh, Lucy, Alina, and Ellie, and my wife, Jen, and uh, they'll, they'll sing a song. But our plans right now to go to the Philippines uh, next summer, we're at about 54% right now, and God is blessed, even through a pandemic. If God calls you to do something, he'll make a way for you to do it. And... Uh, we give them all the praise for that. We're, we're looking to plant churches in the Philippines. Uh, right now, we're uh, praying about Mindoro, and we're going to be looking at some places there in uh, Buswanga. There's some Barang guys that we're praying about. So I'll pray for the Beeman family. Uh, we greatly appreciate that. We, uh, we lived in Michigan. We sold our house, and uh, we're on the road full-time, homeless. But God is <laughs> taking care of us, going church to church. But we're very busy and just thankful to be with you folks tonight. And we pray that uh, the songs would just be a blessing to your hearts. times you felt cheated to have to bear this load while others who would barely even try would spread their wings like eagles in soaring to the sky it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter where you've been it doesn't matter what you've done Jesus is softly calling, but because of who he is, and because of where he's been, because of what he's done, you can start all over again. This guilty burden you have had 
had to bear has made your light so weary though others aren't aware of the mountains of mistakes you've tried to hide with a smile on your face and a broken heart inside it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter where you've been it doesn't matter what you've done Jesus is softly calling, but because of who he is, and because of where he's been, because of what he's done, you can start all over again. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter what you've done. Jesus is softly calling, but because of who he is, and because of where he's been, because of what he's done, you can start all over again. Start all over again. Amen. Were you blessed by that? Praise the Lord. What a very talented family. Thank God that they're giving their voices for the praise and glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as I said a while ago, we would love for them to come back whenever they're around the area and minister, minister to us in you know, preaching and teaching of God's word and maybe um, a little mini concert with the girls, you know. <laughs> we love to have that. And uh, um, Lord willing, we can be a part of your uh, missionary supporting family because we love missionaries here, especially. Uh, we've seen how you, you know, uh, try to uh, do God's calling in your life. I know you can be con comfortable, convenient here, but God's calling is still there, and you want to adhere to that call, and I know that the Lord will honor that, so we just thank God for um, Brother Tim uh, and, and family, Brother Tom, Sister Jen, Lucy, Alina, and Ellie for uh, giving their heart to the Lord. So tonight, as we go to our um, prayer time, um, we'll go first with our praises um, before a, a time of prayer. Um, we'll do this quickly. Uh, we praise and thank the Lord for um, our blessed Sunday worship services and Sunday school classes last Sunday. Uh, we thank God for answered prayers for um, uh, Pastor Camilo Tipai and his grandson, Andy de Guzman, and uh, their way from uh, to full recovery after being um, affected with COVID. So we thank God for all your prayers for the pastors and brethren in our church, and truly God is good. And from uh, also uh, Pastor Abel, thank you, church, for your fervent prayers for my travel. I thank God for his protection and bountiful provision while I'm on quarantine, and he's gaining some weight because if you've seen all the posts of uh, friends and brethren, the Lord sending him money, uh, food, you know, in his um, hotel room. And he said, I'll be having my PCR COVID test this Friday and result will come out Sunday. Wow, please pray for negative results. So, so you know, it's so hard to go home to the Philippines right now with all this um, quarantine and procedure. But uh, he's still uh, ministering to us, doing our program here in our church remotely halfway around the world. So thank God for uh, giving him the grace and mercy. Then our birthday celebrants for the Upcoming week, uh, Brother Jonathan, uh, last Tuesday, you know, Sister Rochelle today, and the Bernals are still in Colorado, and they're enjoying their time there. Brother Sivan on the 26th tomorrow, Caleb Lamson on the 27th, and we have some folks traveling to Florida tomorrow to go to Pensacola Christian College, and some of our young people also graduated there. So it's a great school, great school, and I highly, we highly recommend it for our young people looking for uh, a college. Uh, and my daughter, wow, Eloise Hope, she's turning one year old. Oh, time flies, August the 29th. 
Sister Lehla, August the 30th, and Sister Emia, who's also with us tonight. And continue to pray for her. Um, you know, we just went to uh, an emergency oncologist, you know, um, procedure today and just pray for her treatments that are coming, that the Lord will strengthen her. But we want to greet you, Sister Emia. Advance happy, happy birthday. Thank God for another year of life, isn't it? God is so gracious. And also for wedding anniversaries, Sister Lauren and Brother Kyle on the 28th. Whoa, even me and my wife on the 30th. Uh, I'm not going to say how, how, how many years we're married because I might get it wrong. I'll be in trouble tonight. But we're so blessed. August the 30th already. Wow. Anyways, God is good. God is good. Uh, prayer requests. Uh, Sister Debbie, please include my niece, uh, Ceres Olsem, in your prayers. There you go again. Um, folks that are sick because of COVID, uh, she got it from her school. Please also pray for protection for the family, including my mother, Martha. Nani Martha, all the way from Texas. Thanks a lot. And pray for that. Traveling mercies for the Bernals coming back from Colorado to New Jersey this Saturday. Sister Lela also traveling mercy. She's going to visit her brother and family in Indiana. Lamson family, they're traveling to Florida. Tomorrow, I believe, as they bring Sister Kyla to Pensacola, she is starting her freshman college this year. May God's protection and wisdom will be upon the family. Also, both this and Tiozan family, traveling mercy and safety as they fly to Mexico oh, this Sunday for a week vacation. All right. Last leg of uh, vacation for our family members. And Sister Cora, prayer request, please pray for my brother Jesse and family in the Philippines. They are COVID positive also. My sister-in-law's mother passed away last Wednesday night. Um, extend our condolences to the family. Please pray for strength and comfort to the whole family. Thank you. And then our regular prayer request for uh, wisdom and strength and for the review of Sister uh, Kim Minano and Sister Hazel Manala for their NCLEX. And that, that's the Paklev for um, the immigration visa. And for uh, Cloud Pauline, father of Jacob, Pau's friend, uh, with COVID crit critical condition for a miracle and Lord's healing mercy for Tata Alfred Yambot, Evangelist Herb and Sister Marge Braille for their health and ministry and our seniors and elderly, Sister Luming, Valentino, Sister Naomi, Sister Emia, Sister Marian also, friend uh, for her battle in cancer, Brother Hector De Castro, Teddy De Castro, Edward Cave, Maria Simbenko, Small world, huh? <laughs> Dr. Meyer and Mrs. Geiler, the Bible College, and also um, their ministry there. Sister Shirley Rowell and Brother June Herrera, uh, the brother of Pastor Manny for stage four cancer. Let's continue to pray for them. And then um, we have uh, a guest speaker, if you remember, Brother uh, Randy Shepard from Crossfire Ministries, the one playing basketball. And then they were able to get to... Uh, I think witness to to Kobe before passing before, and uh, he's really a soul winner. He'll be around the area, New Jersey, New York area. So he asked if he could come, and be able to share God's word on September the fifth. So be praying, and also uh, our grandparents Sunday on the twelfth, as we honor our grandparents and uh, attribute the day for them. Then this coming Friday we'll uh, have our joint Friday Bible study since the last Friday of the month. And we'll continue our series of studies. Then we have our prayer chain ministry this Saturday. And continue to pray for the conflict here in the Middle East. Of course, we are commanded to pray for the peace in Jerusalem and Israel. And pray for uh, Afghanistan, as you've been seeing. And that the Lord will protect uh, our uh, American Christian friends, Americans. And uh, continue to pray for our government, for the Lord's awakening and wisdom for them in this matter. And... Uh, God's protection to everyone from COVID and, of course, the new Delta variant and pastoral staff, deacons and church leaders, members, and their families. And, of course, we do always pray for our unsaved loved ones and friends and our missionaries all over the world, pastors and spiritual frontliners. And pray for all our frontliners and their families. There's uh, almost 40 of them working in hospitals and, and nursing homes and healthcare facilities. And do we have other uh, prayer requests? There we go, from Sister Astrid. Please pray for my family and my siblings' family for our travel on Sunday to Cancun, Mexico. Also, please pray for my parents' safety 
Oh, as they travel, Brother uh, Sid, uh, Sister Josie, traveling back to New Jersey from the Philippines on September 8th. Oh, on time for Grandparents Sunday, huh? So let's pray for them. We truly miss uh, Tatay Sid and Aling Josie. Oh, praise God, we could see them again. So, anything else? That's it? All right. So, at this time, I'd like to request everyone to uh, bow our heads, close our eyes, and we will... Uh, Pray silently, individually, um, whatever the Lord has uh, spoken to your heart to pray about. And we'll have um, this uh, music. And then after we had prayed silently, individually, also corporately as a church, I'll just close in a word of prayer. So if you'll do that, please. Close in a word of prayer. Our gracious God and Almighty Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity to come unto you in prayer. Uh, we recognize, Lord, we acknowledge that truly we are 
A needy people, we are totally dependent upon your grace, your mercy, and you can hear uh, the prayers of thy people, the cries of their children, uh, different needs, um, healing mercies and traveling mercies and protection and uh, their burden about their unsaved loved ones and friends and uh, our missionaries and all of these, Lord, are uh, something, Lord, that we can always pray consistently because, Lord, we believe in the power of prayer. So we pray now, Lord, that you uh, give us, Lord, your grace and mercy now because, Lord, we ne can never live apart from you. We are just asking you, Lord, to continue to give us the wisdom and the strength to do your will. And thank you, Lord, that uh, we can come to you in prayer, and we pray that you increase our faith, and we pray that you uh, just listen to these prayer requests, these uh, burdens, desires in our heart, and answer them according to your will. Forth in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you for praying for us tonight and with us. So tonight before uh, we hear Brother Glenn uh, share God's word tonight, uh, we have a special music from uh, Sister Robin.
Amen. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Robin Balitan. And thank you also to my son-in-law, Brother Gilbert. Amen. It's different when the recorder is the husband. It, uh, it makes the sound good. <laughs> Everything is good. So praise God. But kidding aside, I praise God that um, in spite of the fact that uh, my, my uh, daughter is already married, she still sings before I preach the gospel and preach the word of God. But a lot of you is saying, when will Sister Cora do it for me? <laughs> uh, let me remove my mask here. All right. So again, uh, we praise God for your presence tonight. And um, thank you to our visitors. Um, uh, I missed your last name. I'm sorry. Beeman. Beeman, yes. And, uh, as you were uh, mentioning a while ago that you are praying for, uh, I believe, the province of Mindoro. Yeah. yeah. Province of Mindoro, I used to actually go there when I was still in the Philippines, like about 30, 35 years ago. I used to go in um, Mindoro. And I used to work, actually, in Batangas and then go to Mindoro. So I'm, I'm very familiar with that place. So uh, I pray for your safety there and also for uh, your success in your discipleship, obviously, and proclaim, uh, you know, the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I, I will continue to pray. I'm so blessed when uh, your uh, wife and your two uh, children is uh, singing. Praise God. I know that you will uh, bring a lot of blessings and a lot of um, uh, continued uh, knowledge for people to be saved for God. Amen to that. But then again, we have our prayer meeting, Wednesday prayer meeting. And uh, just like what Pastor Sam mentioned, tonight is the last Wednesday for the month of August. Can you imagine that? Amen. Next month is Christmas month. In the Philippines, just to let you know, brother, in the Philippines, and I think your wife knows this, whenever bear months comes in, we hear Christmas carols in the radio. In the Philippines is the longest celebration of Christmas. Yeah, up to January, uh, January 6th. September 1 to January 6. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Amen to that. But uh, we praise God again for your presence. And uh, again, uh, we rejoice in the Lord for your presence tonight. Let's continue to pray for our brethren who are uh, uh, traveling. Uh, I know uh, bro Brother Christian, the Lamson family, obviously, and also our brethren who are on vacation going or going back here and traveling to New Jersey. Let's continue to pray for their traveling mercy. Amen to that. All right. So again, um, we will be focusing our lesson for tonight as we uh, open our lesson. And uh, I know that uh, I was instructed by my wife to send my lesson to Pastor Abel in the Philippines. So I said, Email it to him, email it to him. So I emailed it to Pastor Abel, and lo and behold, I have it. Wow. Pastor Jethro, even if he is in the Philippines, he's still doing the work for God in the ministry. Amen. Th thank you, Pastor. I know Pastor Abel is watching. Pastor, thank you so much. And again, continue to be safe in the Philippines. I know you're in the hotel. We will pray that negative result, because if not, oh, sorry, the Brother Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you will stay for another 14 days. <laughs> My goodness. Wag naman. Uh, wag naman. It's okay. All right. Let's open our Bibles in Romans 12. All right. And I'd like to request the brethren to please stand up as we give reverence to the Word of God. Romans 12. Amen. Romans 12. And the verses clearly says right here. Just follow me. Verse 6 to 8. Very familiar verses. Very familiar verses. A lot of pastors have preached these uh, uh, verses. Romans 12, verse 6 to 8. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorted on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that sheweth mercy with cheerfulness. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, 
thank you for allowing us to be gathered for our Wednesday night prayer meeting. Thank you, Lord, for the Beeman family. I pray, Lord, that you will guide them and keep them safe all the time, especially that they are traveling every day. Keep them safe. Thank you also, Lord, for our brethren who continue to support our Wednesday night prayer meeting. And I pray, Lord, for the traveling mercy of everyone going uh, away in New Jersey or going back to New Jersey. Keep them safe. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, lesson. I pray, Lord, that we will be challenged once again by your word. Keep it in our hearts and apply it in our daily lives as Christians. Father, we continue to love you, honor you. And Lord, we just continue to praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. So I have titled my lesson, I, I Am Gifted by God to Succeed. Amen. Isn't it true that we should all be succeeding by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. And let me put on my glasses because while I'm reading a while ago, I'm having a hard time trying to read. But now it's all clear. Amen. All right. So again, I am gifted by God to succeed. People will always tell me, but Brother Glenn, I think I don't have any gift. That's impossible. I know for a fact, by the grace of God, everybody has a gift. It doesn't matter, small, big, but you have a gift. And that is exactly my lesson for tonight, for you to discover that you have a gift, just in case you're thinking that you don't have a gift. If you are a true child of God, you have a gift according to the Holy Word of God. As a matter of fact, if I may give you my first illustration and introduction to my lesson for tonight. Uh, we just had the Olympics, Tokyo 2020. Some people say Tokyo 2021, but the fact of the matter, it's actually 2020. They didn't just uh, do it during the 2020 because obviously the pandemic. But we just had the Olympics. A lot of countries have obviously competed, you know, USA, China, what have you. They have uh, bronze medal, silver medal, gold medal. They have competed. But there is a story, 2004 Olympics, and his name is actually Matt Emmons from USA. This is a very good and appropriate story for our lesson. Matt Emmons had the gold medal in sight. As a matter of fact, he is the favorite to win the gold medal in his competition. His competition actually is rifle shooting. And he is actually one shot away from claiming the gold victory and the gold medal in the 2004 Olympic 50-meter three-position rifle event. He didn't even need a bullseye to win. He is actually just one, one shot away from winning the gold medal. His final shot merely needed to be on target. That's it, just one shot, and he got the gold medal. Normally, the shot he made would have received a score of 8.1, more than enough for a gold medal score. But it what was described as an extremely rare mistake in a very elite competition. This is what happened. And he will never forget this because he committed the mistake of all mistakes. Ammon's aim and fired at the wrong target. He's standing in lane two. He fired at the target in lane number three. He got the bull's eye, but he fired at the wrong lane. So his score, according to the story, is zero. And instead of getting a gold medal, Emmons ended up in the last place, the eighth place of all the competitors. Sometimes, I wonder how many of us are aiming at the wrong target in our Christian walk. 
Sometimes we thought that we are just on target in our Christian walk, but sometimes you are on the wrong target. While there are certain things that are true of all Christians, some need to worship, to share our faith, to treat others with love. There are also things that are specific to us as individuals. In particular, I'm referring to the spiritual gifts that the Bible says God gives to each and every believer. Do you believe that you have a gift? Now, you need to harness and use that gift. Not on the wrong target, but on the right target. When I say wrong target, I mean, it's okay to use it on the secular world. But more importantly, I think the Lord is telling you, use it also in his ministry to grow the ministry. Amen? So, the, so it, when we know what our gift is and begin to implement that gift in our lives, we will reach levels of spiritual success unknown to us before. And you will be very, very surprised of what the blessing God will give you as you use your gifts for the Lord. We just read the verses. Romans 12, 6 to 8. In his grace. I don't need to read it again. But we will actually dissect that and I will share with you just three points. But these points are interrelated. For us to be successful and harness the gift that God has given to us. Number one, the first thing that we need to do is this. And I'd like you to open your Bibles in 1 Corinthians 12, 4, 6. Let's go there. 12, 1 Corinthians. Let me go to myself. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 to 6. Now there are diversities of gifts. Now take note, diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Amen. So meaning to say, the Bible is saying here, accept the fact that you are gifted. Don't make the mistake of saying, I don't have a gift. The Bible says God has given, it, given us different gifts for every level for doing certain things well. You are included in this as if you are a Christian. If you have God in your heart, you are included in this. That means that you have personally been given a certain ability by God, by God himself. And that certain ability is what the Bible refers to us as a spiritual gift. We'll look at some of the gifts in a few moments, but for now, I want you to concentrate on the fact that you are a gifted Christian. Amen? You have to accept that. Because if you don't, you're missing the blessing. Now, for some of you, that is a hard thing to accept. Some of you, oh, Brother Glenn, I don't think I have a gift. You might not notice anything special about yourself, or perhaps you are a person who has been told over and over again that you don't have any gift that you would never amount to anything or something along those lines. But here is the thing. I'm here today to tell you that even if you have not even success in whatever you did before, like sports or maybe uh, business or maybe work, I'm telling you, you have a success in your life because of the gift that God has given you. Maybe you have been not successful in anything, in any measurable way. But you can be extremely successful as a follower and a minister for God's word. Now, obviously, I will not mention any names. But some of us here are doing that type of gift that glorifies our Lord. Now, people will tell me, Brother Glenn, I only go to church to listen. You know what? That is a gift. Not everybody can listen intently, right? Brother Glenn, I only talk to myself. Again, that's a gift. Nobody talks to himself. It's like you. It is a gift. You may be sweeping the floor of the church, or maybe the doing, uh, if you have the gift of gab, maybe obviously, um, I remember <laughs> specifically when I was very new in this church, 
uh, Pastor Max uh, noticed that uh, he said, Brother Glenn, I think you can be good in song leading. And during that time, I had no knowledge whatsoever of the hymnal. But he said, I think you are good in song leading. I will teach you. And lo and behold, that's what exactly what happened to me. And I even actually idolized Brother Robert. Because Brother Robert, very good in uh, song leading. So I followed the steps of Brother Robert. I said to myself, I can do this too. Gift. Some people here in our church are good in fellowship. Coordinating the food. That's another gift. But what I'm trying to tell you is the main purpose of our, each, each of our gifts is what? To minister to each other and make our, our local church grow. That's the main purpose. For the community to notice that there is a Bergen Bible Baptist Church here that proclaims the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For them to be saved also. The special gift that God has given to you comes to you by means of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Obviously, when we are not Christians, you will notice you don't have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Tinique. The Holy Spirit actually empowers you to do the gift that God has given you. It is not your own. My wife always tells me, Dad, I'm, 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 I'm really grateful that you are here in America. You know why? Because the way you talk, the way you uh, conduct yourself, uh, that's not a, a picture, I think you will be a very corrupt politician. <laughs> you're not a politician only, but you're a very corrupt politician. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe my wife is right. And I'm just glad that I got saved and I came to America. And obviously the Lord has changed the course of my life. And also to you. I cannot speak to you, to you, but I can only speak for myself. You look at your own background. You look at your own life before you became a Christian. And I guess you will tell me, Brother Glenn is right. Without the Lord, without the saving knowledge of God, I think I'm doing something evil or I'm doing something bad or I'm doing something else. Without the grace of God. So, in other words, I am well aware that many of you, do, you don't think that you have anything to offer. And you think that you are not much of a use in the kingdom of God. But nothing could be farther from the truth. God has given you a gift. God has given you something in your personality for you to be able to use it for the growth and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. For you to contribute in a very positive manner for Bergen Bible Baptist Church, who happens to be our local, local church. And the same thing, uh, obviously some people are uh, watching me, maybe in the Philippines or on some other parts of the world. Wherever you are right now, brethren, wherever you are, if you are obviously in your place of worship, place of church, you can be gifted and you can use that gift also to grow your local assembly wherever you are. And I don't care who you are as long as you accept the fact that you are being given or you've been given a gift and that gift is being harnessed through the Holy Spirit because you are a child of God. What is important for now is that you accept the fact that you are gifted. You have to accept that fact. Because if not, I mean, nothing will happen. You will always tell yourself, I'm not gifted, I'm not gifted. I'm not. You have to accept that you are gifted because you are a child of God. Which brings us to the second point. The second important step in your spiritual success is this. Discover the gift that God has given you because it is important for you to harness and it is, it, it, there's no way for you to make that gift grow if you don't discover it. 1 Corinthians 14, 1, what does the Bible say here? Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophecy. So the Bible is saying right here, I mean, players, 
And this is a very good illustration that I got from the internet. Players gathering for the first day of basketball practice at US, UCLA were full of anticipation. And I think if we had mentioned to you this coach, you will, you will know who I'm talking about. They wondered how their coach, and that coach is the legendary coach, John Wooden. Anybody know who John Wooden is? Um, obviously, if you don't play basketball and you don't have the history of basketball, uh, he is the winning, winningest coach in UCLA history. So John Wooden would set the tone for the long season to come in basketball. They didn't have to wait long. Veterans knew what was coming, and here is what he says. But first-year players were no doubt perplexed by the initial lesson imparted by their Hall of Fame coach. He taught them, and here's the thing, it may be very basic, but uh, Coach Gooden mentioned this. He taught them how to put on a pair of socks before you play basketball. And people are, you know, the players are just laughing. I mean, I know how to put my socks. I mean, I don't, I don't need to be taught. You know, I mean, it's, it's very basic. But you know what, Jerry? <laughs> You know what uh, John Wooden would say? I know you know how to put your socks, but when you play in my team and you play for me, you have to know exactly how that sock is put in your feet before you play basketball. There is, there is a way. Pala. And according to this story, Wooden would always inspect the sacks of his basketball players before they put on their basketball shoes. He wants it to be very tight and clean, no small smudges, exactly the way it was fitted in your feet. Because he's saying that when you are playing basketball and now you go back and forth in the court, when you don't have those sacks tightened in your feet, it will cause blisters, and it will affect the way you play. And that's true. The coach would not compromise on this very basic fundamental principle. And you know what? The players appreciate it because it really happened to them. Now, as your coach for tonight in our uh, Wednesday night prayer meeting, I'm trying to explain to you the necessity of discovering your spiritual gift. Very basic, but you need to. You need to know what your spiritual gift is. And some of you might not realize the importance of that and think it might be very basic, but think it is a waste of time, maybe. But I assure you that until you discover how God has gifted you, you are not going to succeed. There's no way for you to succeed because there's no way for you to harness and grow your gift. This is a fundamental truth that you need to understand. This is something that we need to understand because God has intended for us to be successful in our spiritual gifts. You have to discover how you are gifted before you are able to implement the gifts that God has given you. Amen? Very basic, but very true. In the Bible, we are given several lists of spiritual gifts that God gives to us. I read to you one of those lists at the beginning of this message, that list included prophecy, service, you know, maybe teaching, encouragement, giving, leadership, showing kindness, showing love. But more importantly, there are other lists of spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 and also in Ephesians 4. We don't have time to go there. I don't believe any of these are exhaustive lists, but they give us a good idea of the variety and diversity of gifts that God gives to his people. Now, some of you may say, uh, Brother Glenn, I don't have the gift of God just like Pastor Sam or Pastor uh, Jeter or Pastor Abelardo, Pastor I, I, Abel. I mean, I, I don't have that. You can do other things for God. Amen. Amen? Amen? You can do other things for God. And I don't need to mention a lot of our brethren here who does this and that for the glory and praise of our Lord Jesus Christ. And one thing is for sure, all of those gifts that we do for each other and for the Lord, it amounts, this, it amounts 
to growing the church. That is the bottom line. We are not here to compete with each other. I am not here to compete with Brother Robert, okay, or Brother uh, uh, Henry, bro Brother Bobby, uh, in speaking. No, we are not competing with each other. We are actually praising God as we deliver the message. We are being taught by Pastor Sam. We are being taught by our pastors, by our visiting missionaries and visiting pastors. We are being taught, and we don't compete with them. We actually complement each other for the glory and, and, and praising the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen to that. In the Bible, we are given several lists, and I just mentioned to you that. And I want you to begin to ask your friends here at our church. A lot of us are already friends. And some of you are actually not only claiming that we are friends with each other, but actually we are family. More than friends, we are family. And the greatest satisfaction for the kingdom of God is when we actually complement our gifts and use it in all and in totality for the glory of God. We help each other. We help each other for the glory of God. And again, I just want you to figure out, uh, obviously, what exactly is the gift that you need to harness and use. You can accept that God has gifted you and then discover what gift he has given to you. But if you don't take the third step that I'm just about to tell you right now, which is actually the last one, it won't do much good. So number three and the last one. Use your gift to succeed in every way. Not only that you harness, but use it to succeed in every way. First Corinthians 12.7. The Bible says right here, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. I hope that you all realize your value to this church. Now some people... Brother Glenn, I'm a nobody in church. I don't believe that. I don't believe that you are a nobody in church. In the eyes of God, in the eyes of our pastor and fellow Christian, everybody is a somebody. Amen? Amen? Don't even think that you are a nobody. No, 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 no. No matter who you are or where you come from, you are each of equal value to the building of the kingdom of God. Amen? That's the bottom line. And I know that this is true because God has given you each a spiritual gift for the express purpose of you using it to assist the church in its mission. And what is the mission? Obviously, to proclaim the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's consider this from a negative perspective. Let's say that you decide not to use the gift that God has given you. You discovered it, but you did not use it. What will happen here is your spiritual life will suffer. You will neglect the gift that God has given you. You will suffer and you will remain dissatisfied because you are not doing God is asking you what, you what you're supposed to do. You will be dissatisfied. But let's consider it positively on the opposite. It says right here, if you discover your gift and begin using it in a service for your spiritual life, guess what? Your spiritual life will escalate and will grow and will flourish and will be blessed by our Lord Jesus. Fulfillment. You will have a sense of fulfillment because you know in your heart that you have discovered the gift that God gave you and now you're using it to succeed in the ministry. You have to use your gift in service to God through the local church. Whatever local church you may have. And obviously I'm referring to the people who are uh, you know, listening to me by Zoom, whatever your church, use it. And just like pieces to a puzzle, your gift will complement my gift and the gifts of others until the picture, the big picture becomes totally complete. You are part of the puzzle to grow 
the ministry of Jesus Christ. In the context of spiritual gifts, Paul wrote the following. We know this for a fact, Corinthians 12, 27. All, for all of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. Each of you is a part of it. Now, when you realize that and begin living out the giftedness that God has given to you through the local church, you will begin to see a whole new opportunity for spiritual growth and success that you've never seen before in your Christian life. Amen. Amen to that. The whole kingdom concept will begin to make sense to you as you see your specific and personal role in the process of proclaiming the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice that you're able to prophecy, speak out. If you're gifted to serve, then start serving. If you are a teacher and gifted to teach, start teaching. If you are gifted to encourage others, start encouraging and motivating others. If you are gifted to speak and teach, use teaching as a gift to propagate the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I am amazed with our deacons. I am amazed with our Sunday school teachers. Not everybody has totally the gift of God or the gift of gab, but they studied and they harnessed and now they're able to deliver the message of God in a very proper and communicable way, in effective way. Amen. The point is that if you want to be successful, you have to start acting on the areas that God has gifted you in the start and doing it right now. What you need to understand is that God wants you to be a success. A success not only in the eyes of your fellow Christians, in the eyes of your pastor, but more importantly, in the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ. What amazing feat to do that. In conclusion, if I may just say, now I know that some of you already have been doing what I've been talking about, you know, teaching, fellowshipping, preparing food, sweeping the floor, encouraging teaching. You know exactly what I'm talking about, that you have found your place in our service and plugging in every chance you can to encourage people and to display the gift that God has given you. But here is my challenge. If there is anybody is still thinking that they are a nobody, I want you to stop that. I will repeat, you are not a nobody. You are always a somebody. A somebody in church that will always encourage us to promote God and just be a blessing to everybody. Don't even think that you don't have a gift. The Holy Spirit will empower you. It is not you that will empower you. It is the Holy Spirit that will empower you because the Holy Spirit lives in every Christian. And with that, I will close and I will just say to you, let us continue to be successful using the gifts that, has, that God has given to us, successful in the manner of praising God and boldening each and every Christian to be a very valuable Christian to praise and honor God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be gathered once again in our Wednesday night prayer meeting. Thank you for our visitor. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to keep them safe all the time, guide their steps. And Lord, I know this is a very, very difficult situation with this pandemic, with this coronavirus. I pray, Lord, that you will keep them safe. Keep everybody safe that we may not have this uh, virus in our lives and also continue safety in our everyday life. Thank you, Lord, for your love. We praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen to that. Thank you, Brother uh, Glenn, for the message, for reminding us that we are saved to serve, isn't it? We all have spiritual gifts, at least one, uh, serving gifts, and we, apart from natural skill and God-given talents, so let's just use them for the glory of God, our time, talent, and treasure, because he's worth it, isn't it? It's worth to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So once again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll see you next time. God bless you all.
Have a good night.